Hi everyone, you are listening to the First Year Decoded podcast hosted by IEEE UFT, the show that decodes the first year experience by providing valuable insights and experience from current engineering students. I'm your host, Bernie Chow, a Track 1 AC222 and one of the logistics directors at IEEE UFT, along with producer Akinori Kimura, who will explore various topics of academia and professional development to help you succeed in your first year of engineering. Are you worried about how to approach your university lectures from home? Or are you anxious about how to form effective teams in ESP or Praxis with people you've never met? In this episode, we invited IEEE Chair Gaurav Ragna and Frosh Subcon leader Selena Tong to talk about how they get things done at home. Both of our guests have extensive experience leading teams remotely and excelling in online courses, providing us with great insights to succeed in the online setting. In this context, we also discuss time management tips and how we try to maintain our motivation throughout the course of a school year. Hey guys, thanks for coming on the show today. Why don't we start with a quick round of short introductions. Garv, do you mind going first? Yeah, for sure. My name is Garv and I'm an EC222. I'm also the chair of the uh, IEEE UFC. And hi, my name is Selena Tong. I'm an Indy 2T2 plus track one. Amazing. So I guess just a quick catch up with you guys. How have you guys been doing during the quarantine? Uh, at first it was a bit rough, but um, I didn't really have any luck finding any internships this summer. So I decided to take three online courses, um, which all went pretty well. And I think we'll dive into that a bit more later in the episode. Yeah. I've been doing pretty uh, well, too. Um, the most stressful part of going online was definitely moving out of my apartment, going back home. Um, I was fortunate enough to secure like a summer kind of thing early on before we went online. So that's been really fun. And I guess we'll dive into that, too, later. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's good to hear that you guys are both doing well, because I know this transition can be rough for a lot of people. Let's get started on our topics. So our first topic is going to be more on the online studying tips. And I was just wondering, how have how did you guys find the transition between the in-person uh, in-person online courses, uh, in-person courses and online courses at the end of second semester? I think at the beginning it was a bit of a rough transition just because um I think everyone was just kind of thrown into the deep end like profs didn't really know how to adapt so quickly and accommodate to all of our needs. So I think just like the end of second semester was just, it was definitely challenging to navigate through just because there was so much uncertainty and everyone was just figuring it out for the first time. Yeah, for me, it was uh, it was not a good transition. I still remember like the last day of school and then we all they were like, oh, we're gonna go online and everyone was like defeated. So I spent, I think the next week just playing like video games and not paying attention to school. I felt so far behind. But, um, you know, luckily the profs were really accommodating and um, I think they did a good job uh, figuring stuff out and it ended up just fine. Yeah, I remember, I think it was like, everyone was still debating, oh yeah, it's gonna go online, it's gonna go online. And I was so sure that I was like, nah, like COVID hasn't hit that bad. Yeah. And then literally next week, everyone was like, okay, it's online. I was, I was very shook myself, but <laughs> yeah, I guess, I think the profs were, I say, accommodating because for some situations they would understand that people are going home, they're doing different time zones, and like, yeah, for sure, I think. Yeah, but it, they were put in a really tough position just because like, obviously going online, you have to be more concerned about cheating and stuff, but also at the same time, you want to accommodate for like different um, time zones and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think th like generally, like they listen to what the students say. Yeah. I mean, originally, like, I thought I'd be gone for, like, a week and then come back to school, or at least for, like, I do finals in person. But um, now it's August, and that's what <laughs> happened. Yeah. Do you guys mind explaining uh, what kind of online learning environment that they set up for you guys? Like, for myself at home? Like, as in, like, what did UFT do to, like, change the study environment from in person to on home like 
for ACE, we did a lot of BB Collaborate. We had some courses on through Zoom. Oh yeah, so for Indie, our profs, um, we did everything through BB Collaborate. Nothing was through Zoom. Um, one prof didn't have any more recordings. It was just readings for the rest of the semester. Another one did pre-recorded videos that we could watch at our own time. Um, and then the others did live BB Collaborate, which they also recorded so we could watch after as well. Mm -hmm. Did you guys find, did you guys find that easier to follow, like in terms of lectures or you just much prefer the in-person lectures? Uh, well, for me, for the end of second semester, the live recordings were a bit disorganized just because the profs themselves were trying to figure out, figure out how to like properly use it or like they would get like technical issues that they didn't really know how to fix um but in the summer honestly having the online lectures i found really helpful because you could you were able to watch it like at a later time because they were recorded so there's something um there's like a chrome extension called video speed controller which i downloaded which is very helpful because bb collaborate doesn't have an option to like speed up or slow down the videos so when I would rewatch the videos, I would just use that and watch it at like 1.5 or like sometimes two, just if the prof is like super slow. So I was able to, it was more flexible in the sense that I could play it at a speed that made sense for my brain. And then if I had any issues, I was able to just like pause and rewatch sections, which was really helpful because in lecture, like if you're like out of it for the first half, you're just like, it's kind of a lost cause. Like you can't really pick up from there. Yeah, for ECE, it was so dependent on, like, the prof. Like you said, we had a lot of BB collaborate, but, like, one prof just did the, like, MIT online uh, videos, which weren't terrible. Um, but for me, I'm pretty much, like, a textbook guy myself, and, like, lectures, they're cool to go to and fun to go to, but I honestly don't learn that much from them. So it didn't impact my learning too much. Um, I still went through the textbook, did all the problems, and uh, ended up okay. If you if you guys attended like live lectures like ever, do you guys find it easier to ask questions for online lectures? Because I for sure did. Like for one of my courses, I was always so lost in person lectures, and it's kind of awkward in person. Sometimes you just raise your hand and the prof don't see you, and then your questions so like just in the tiny details, and then you're just kind of like eh, and then that really <laughs> impacts your learning sometimes, you know. Whereas in online, like the teachers keep in mind of the notifications and they just kind of like answer small questions like for me that really helped me study like during the online sessions yeah. yeah I think an advantage of online is also I feel like all students can have more confidence asking questions um, just because it's a lot less intimidating to just send something in a chat box or even if you want to like raise your hand or something in the call um, than to like speak up in lecture because tech like it doesn't like derail it too much because the prof is able to like answer it when they want or how they want so yeah I think that's I think it's better in particip in a participation aspect yeah. online but I I also I also do do what Selena does like sometimes for some lectures I just wait till lecture is over and just watch it on like 1.5 speed yeah, I really underestimated how responsive profs are online, especially like emails. I get emails back in like 10 minutes when I've read a question um, versus like in person, I'd have to wait till like office hours to really talk to them or ask my questions. Yeah, that's good to know. I think they're really trying to just push more like resources from the TA and from the profs now that they know mm -hmm. that there's no like direct communication. Uh, and also in terms of like extra help, like I took APS 360 with Brenny this summer and um, for like office hours in person, I like every year I tell myself like this is the year you're going to office hours. But sometimes it like literally takes like half an hour to like find the building to go up like the eight flights of stairs to find the small office in the back where you can like ask like a five minute question. So like most of the time it's not worth your time to go to office hours. But um, what I found with this course, it was actually set up extremely well. So they had like a, what was it, like a four hour slot maybe where they just had different TAs um, with different breakout rooms. So you would just enter it and if it was empty, 
you could just ask like share them your screen and ask them your questions which I found really nice and I really hope that they like continue that even if we do go back in person at some point just because it is so much more accessible and so easy for students to get the help that they need yeah going back to like asking questions in like class settings I remember this time last year I don't know if you remember but um I was in the C++ class, the EC244 class, and there was like like 100 people in the room or like 50 people in the room. And I asked a question to the prof and I asked him, what's the difference between I++ and plus plus I in the for loop? <laughs> and then he roasted me so hard in front of everyone. It was like pretty embarrassing. Cause, uh, and he called me like a kindergartner. And I was like, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't call me a kindergartner, but he asked, he was like, that's a kindergartner's question. And I was like, oh. Oh, no. Yeah, it was not, not a great memory, but I feel like online, it's not like you're anonymous, but like, it's, lo- it's, it's more, less embarrassing. Yeah, it's less embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, the embarrassment is like more internal. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I do agree, though, because for APS 360, like, I, I would say that it's, like, the TAs definitely spent a lot more time just trying to be there for us. And sometimes it's just harder to debug through online meetings, too. So I think, yeah, I think definitely we, we can, like, hope that they keep those kind of tutorial office hours for us. Do you think that the first years would have a hard time going into first year with this online setting or do you think that potentially it can have more benefit in terms of academics? I I think so. Um, Not just because of the online environment, but even for them, right? Like I have a lot of friends who are graduating, like they went for March break thinking they'd come back to school and that was it for them, right? So a lot of them don't even know what like a derivative is, let alone like an integral, right? So like when you get to like calc one without knowing like the fundamentals of like calculus and like limits, I think that's going to be the reason a lot of them struggle. Um, but I think like on the faculty side, they're doing a good job. Like they have this like a uh, math program over the summer they can do um, and all that stuff. So I'm hoping that kind of counterbalances it. But if it doesn't, then I really don't know what to do at that point. Yeah. Like in terms of academics, I think the biggest hurdle will obviously be those missing gaps that they might have from their second semester. And also just like figuring out how Quarkus works um, in general. Cause I remember in our first year, I was, it took me a while to get used to it just because I think, was it our year that they uh, changed to Quarkus? Cause they used to use something else. Yeah. So I think all the profs were also still trying to like figure out how they wanted to post their information. And I remember it being confusing because like, some profs would put their syllabus in the syllabus section, but others would put it like in their like modules. And like, it was really hard to find the information you needed and to like keep track of announcements and stuff. And especially at the beginning, you're overwhelmed with so much information coming to you. Like if you just don't know how to like change your email settings or something, so you're getting like 20 a day and you don't really know which ones you should be looking at. Um, But I think once they get into the groove of it, I think it could be um, advantageous to also study online just because you can it's like same with the help you can get help easier I think online in that sense like it's less intimidating and um also just going at your own pace I think is a lot helpful like a lot more accessible online one thing about studying online though I'd say it's because you're technically like you're studying online so basically you're at home so it's hard to focus sometimes I would say like, it's easier to just be like, eh, it's recorded, I can just watch it later, and then you can wake up later, and then you just kind of, like, procrastinate, do other things before you actually attend the lectures. Do you guys have any, like, tips for, like, stopping this, like, um, just, like, motivating yourself to actually sit down and just grind through the lectures or, like, get down to work? Um, I think in terms of self-discipline, I didn't have, like, too much of a challenge um just because I'm not like the biggest procrastinator so I'm like lucky in that sense because I think with an online setting like if you are a procrastinator it can definitely like you can definitely fall behind really fast just because it's like oh it's recorded I can just watch it later but I think just setting a strict schedule for yourself to follow um is very important so that that doesn't happen yeah I think accountability is like a huge issue moving online 
And um, I think it's even worse for like the the frosh coming in because they haven't really they they're gonna have a hard time making friends. And friends is what kept me accountable all through our first year. And even this year, you know, I signed up for like identical courses with my friends so we could like push each other and then just like stay accountable and on top of things. Um, in terms of tips, if you're really going by it alone, I really recommend at least reaching out to an upper year to help kind of guide you through that process. Um, some people have messaged me coming in and I, I'm, I'm, I'm available to help them, right? Um, and then, yeah, that strict schedule that Selena was saying, that is, that is really, really important. And um, it's important kind of not to just like, it's like it's not gonna work out the first time, right? You kind of iterate on your schedule and you gotta make sure you have enough time for work and play or else it's just not sustainable. Yeah, I do agree. And as Garth just mentioned, like having an upper year really does help. Like having friends is really important. I would still suggest like, like you guys have the big group chats and then so you can like message some people, make you make a smaller group chat and kind of work off that. But yeah, for sure, reaching out to upper years. I think most of our guests has mentioned after the interview that they're willing to be the like be there for the first year. So if any of the first years want to reach out to the guests, like they are they all said that feel free to like message them on Facebook, on Instagram to reach out to them. So just want to put that out there. So there are resources for sure. But yeah, my personal tip would also to be like setting a schedule, like time blocking. So what I do is I just sit down like in the morning and like kind of like time block, block all my time. Like what, like, let's say one, two, three, I'm going to do this thing. But one thing that I keep in mind personally is that I'm not too strict on my time blocking. So when I accidentally like had something else to do, I wouldn't feel awful that I like didn't do this other thing. And I think that small difference really makes a big diff uh, makes like makes it better because if I worked really strict, then I would just be, just be disappointed in myself for not following my schedule. And then I'll just be like, eh, I already didn't follow my schedule. I might as well just chill today. Like, I think that's like, one big tip, just don't be too strict on yourself, but still try and continue to follow the timeline as much as possible. Yeah, I think the tip I would give is even though you can watch recorded lectures, try to watch the lectures live as much as possible. Just because like how I find recorded lecture is like I I know I have the ability to pause the lecture. And so I pause and then think about it a little bit and write things down. And so I end up taking like two hours for a one hour lecture. And it's not very time efficient and so it, during a live lecture you're forced to like sit down and just be there and so yeah watching live lecture is my tip one thing about um online studying also is that now everything's moved online you're forced to have meetings online like the things that we mentioned the tutorial tutorials were in the online setting and um if you have some team projects you would be forced to do it online as well so I, I guess one big topic people have been wondering and worrying about is how to work together online in a meeting setting. And since both Garav and Selena, you guys have been leading a lot of online meetings this summer, I was just wondering if you guys have any tips for having efficient online meetings. Uh, yeah, so I think to start off, to just have like either like an agenda for the meeting so everyone knows what to expect and how long approximately they need to allocate to get what they need to get done. Um, whether it's just like a check-in or it's like, oh, we're going to be sitting on call and working until we're like done this project. Um, and then also just be mindful of what environment you're doing the meeting from. So if you're from, I think typically just using headphones or earbuds or something, to block out like outside noise is important. Um, also, if you live with your like a roommate or a family, just to maybe notify them that you need some quiet, so there's not too much like chaos or like background noise. Um, and yeah. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of experimenting with like meetings, especially at, like IEEE. Um, and I think the format that's worked best, mm -hmm. at least for us, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Brandy, but um, at least for executive meetings. We, instead of doing like long meetings, we kind of do huddles, right? And um, to start off every huddle, we start off with like a question that is not related to like our work at all, right? So like last week, it was like, if you could learn one skill instantaneously, what would it be? And um, I think the difference between just diving into work versus starting on something fun is huge. 
Um, you know, more people are like active is what I've seen. But then going into the meeting, another thing we do is that there's not one person talking, right? It's just not me talking. Like I do the least talking. I think every director um, gives an update on what they're doing and having people like actively engage in their own work and present what they've done. Um, I think it's something else that keeps the meetings not boring. And other than that, the only thing is is what Queen has said. Like, if know what the purpose of the meeting is. If it's a check-in or if it's like a long, you know, creative session where you're coming out with ideas. And yeah, those are my tips. Yeah, I think I think I do agree, Ahara. But I think those executive meetings weren't too hard to sit through. I think it's nice that it's nice that we start off with something really just like light, just like a fun fact. So it's not something super serious. And yeah, I, I would suggest to keep the meetings to the point. Like I would suggest like if you have any docs that you have to read prior, you ask everyone to read it before so you can just go straight into the discussion during the meeting. So you don't have to like read through the doc together. And I also was wondering that since there are, def there are definitely like different kind of meetings, the ones that we mentioned just now was kind of like a status update, more like logistical meetings. And for those meetings, it's easy to just kind of like finish and just like update everyone and just end the meetings. But as Selena said, we were in the same class together for like a project and those are definitely more technical, like where we would code together in the meetings. And I was just wondering if you guys have any like tips or suggestions for those kind of meetings, like more technical ones. Uh, yeah, for technical ones, I'd say, like, it's less talking the entire time. It's more so to just have each other so you can ask a question right away um, when you need a response. So, again, just being mindful of, like, background noise or just, like, when you don't need to talk, just muting yourself. Like, um, for Frosh, I've been in Zoom calls with over, like, 100 people. So in calls like that, you just it's more of a, a listening standpoint and you just need to be like an active participant, I guess. So keeping your video on to ensure that the presenter, that there's actually people paying attention is just like a kind of to like show your respect, I guess, but also things like keeping, like muting yourself when you're not speaking um, is really important. Yeah. yeah I've done a, a lot of like software development kind of like work over the summer. Um, and uh, what we do, at least for my team, it's a team of four people, so already there's not that many people involved. Uh, but we call them like mini hackathon days. So it'll be like, all right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to log on to Discord at like, I don't know, like 10 a.m. noonish. And then we're just going to stay coding till, I don't know, dinner time. So like good, like five, six hours in. Um, and it's not like we're talking to each other all the time, right? Like we all set up tasks prior. So we know exactly what we're doing, but there will be moments where we have to collaborate, especially to integrate our code or our tech stack. And um, yeah, that's really worked for us. It's gotten us to do a lot of work. And without that, I don't know, I think before we kind of just went on our own and kind of did stuff, but that was never as efficient as having those like grind days that we do pretty, pretty frequently now. I think also being like wary of long meetings mm -hmm. um, is to take breaks where appropriate yeah. so I feel like like an appropriate measurement that like um in our frosh meetings we use is like um they do something called 20 20 20 which is like every 20 minutes you take a 20 second break and stare 20 feet into the distance just to like for your eye fatigue it's just not good to be staying in a computer for so long um and then also just if it's like over an hour I'd say like every hour, like at least a five minute break so people can like grab a snack, get some water, like go to the washroom. Um, just because like online stamina is just, it's, it's different for like, than, than being in person and taking those breaks for your eyes and for your, and just for your like well being is very important. Yeah, I should, um, I should probably preface that my team at least, we're like very unprofessional when we do meet. Um, we're all like best friends, so it's, um, it's not hard for us to stay on a call for a long time, right? But like things like Frost Week where not everyone kind of knows each other, definitely think those breaks are very important. Yeah, I, I do agree. Sometimes like having long meetings, especially like like not having a purpose sometimes, which is why agenda is really important. You'll just be like wondering why am I on there and is this necessary? Mm -hmm. So I'd say like, yeah, strict schedule and like take breaks 
and make it a little bit more chill would be a nice kind of like online settings because people tend to get more nervous online since you're directly staring into someone else's like face which is like just a lot more awkward it can be a lot more awkward in a lot of times especially when you're not familiar with the people yeah i can't imagine how it's going to be for like the incoming first years how they're going to have like the esp and the praxis meetings for the first time online they don't even know like who these people are um yeah. what kind of tips do you how do you guys think you would approach like your first esp meeting to with people well you've never met yeah in my jre 420 course um we actually had kind of like similar situation where um, we were assigned groups for like our big group project so you were randomly selected to be in a team with people that you don't know in your tutorial um, and something that I find really challenging with online meetings that I discovered in that setting was that like you can't make people talk if they don't want to talk like we never turned on our videos um, for our meetings just that was kind of like a unspoken thing that we did like no one had just ever turned them on so I feel like typically in BB Collaborate people don't um, so it was only really me and my friend who were talking and it was really difficult to get other people in the group to share their ideas. Even when we like called them out by name, we're like, Hey, like, what do you think? Like the thing is with online meetings, you can't, you can't get them to say anything if they don't want to, which is definitely a challenge. So mm -hmm. yeah, working with new people online is very different. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think, yeah, that's for sure. Something that we have to keep in mind for the first years. I mean, hypothetically, I feel like something, since you brought that problem up, if it was for ESP groups, I feel like they should really spend that time and try to, like, play online games with each other or, like, have, like, other Zoom calls for, like, fun. Like, let's say they, they play Scribble together to get to kind of, like, know each other. Just because ESP is something that just focuses on team, teams so much and they have to stick with their group for, like, a long time compared to like a lot of other projects. So I would really suggest, you know, turning that camera on, getting out of your comfort zone. Since you have to make friends with other people anyways, you might as well start with your ESP team. Yeah, I had a, I had a unique experience this summer. I was working on this like I lead fellowship like alongside Hatchery. Um, and we're put into like random groups of like four or five. And um, well, first of all, like, everyone there was like great and friendly. So the project went really well. But um, I think I was definitely nervous going to the experience, but like just being a decent person, you know, and being friendly and welcoming really goes a long way. And like that experience was so great that like we've already scheduled like social when we get back in person, like April. And like, I've never met any of these people in person, right? So that was a really great experience for me at least. So I guess now we're still on the topic of online meetings. I was just kind of like wondering how you guys schedule online meetings since sometimes like frequent schedules would be like hard people have different schedules for like weekly like what scheduling method have you kind of stuck to or is it different for each team uh for myself it's different for each team um when it's just me and my like subcom partner for frosh for example we try to do uh, like a checkup every monday and we do that on facebook call but with our like weekly checkpoint with our VC we do that through a Google meet and then whenever a time doesn't work we just like shoot a message and then we rework it um, for YNCN we use Google meets as well um, and then for like our big frosh calls we use zoom so it really depends um, I feel like just staying consistent for whichever kind of meeting you're so you like you're not like trying to figure out five seconds before which platform you're supposed to be on. I think just keeping a consistent platform would be good. How, how do you manage to get, like, let's say a big frosh group to all be like available at the same time though? Do you just like send out invitations and try and get as many people? Well, the, the big frosh calls are not like, um, they're like the training session. So it's like everyone just, is expected to be there for those times. Um, but if you can't, then it's like, I think you just watch the recording. Yeah, um, for me, like I religiously use when to meet to schedule times, um, Zoom to the actual call, and then just Slack for any like messaging. And if someone like doesn't message me like on those three platforms, 
like I'll take a while to reply. So people usually know to message me there. Um, but yeah, I think when you brought up like how you get all those people online at the same time, like that's never going to happen. There's always going to be like a couple of people who just won't be available at that time. And I think it's even more important to kind of have like a fallback plan to get in touch with them and keep them in the loop. Because like, like a lot of the reasons they won't come, it's not because they don't want to come, it's just they can't make it, right? Um, so yeah, I think reaching out to them after directly messaging them, seeing if they can make the next one, if not moving the time, uh, that's what works best, at least in my experience. Yeah, I agree because you also have to keep in mind that a lot of people right now during the pandemic are around the world. They're not really in the same time zone. So just keep in mind that like you can try your best to schedule a good time, but it, it can't always be the case for sure. Okay, so um, moving on to more on the time and stress, stress management uh, for like next year, for the first years, how do you find kind of like the time to kind of like balance watching lectures and like doing some side projects or even like being in clubs online since it'll be harder to kind of like organize your time if you're just like staying at home in the same environment mm -hmm. I think being online um an advantage is that you have more flexibility as to when you want to schedule certain things like now you don't have to be in class from like nine to five, nine to six, whatever it is, like, if you are better, like, if you're a night owl and you work better at night, then maybe you can get some other things done during the day and reschedule it like that. Um, but again, just keeping on top of what you need to accomplish within that day or within that week is incredibly important so you don't fall behind. Mm -hmm. What do you use to schedule your time? I'm very old-fashioned. I like to use an agenda because for myself, just, like, the act of writing stuff like what I want to do on paper like translates well than if I were to just like type it up and like throw it in my google calendar um so yeah I don't I also same like you I don't like to keep a strict schedule with my day I like to write down a list of things that I want to accomplish that day and then kind of just play it as I go like whatever I'm feeling at that moment it's like oh like I really I'm not in the mental space to like watch a lecture right now maybe I'll do my workout earlier today or something like that and then do my lecture maybe late at night because I'm feeling mm -hmm. surprisingly awake or something like that yeah I've had to balance a lot um first years of university and I think the biggest mistake I've seen people make is like expecting they can do like a hundred percent in every single like vertical right like I knew going in that like if I'm going to chair IEEE and do my own like side project I'm not going to get the best grades in the world right so I went in setting those expectations where I wanted them to be, and that just helped keep me sane. Like, I've seen people destroy themselves over trying to be perfect at everything they do. Um, and that's okay. Like, I, I, I personally like where I'm headed, and, you know, people who are really focused in school, like, more, more power to them, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, other than that, the schedule has really helped. I'm not going to lie, like, midway through the semester, the schedule has always, like, disappeared. I have no idea where it went. Mm -hmm. But even then, like when I realized that, I regrouped, make a new schedule, and um, it's not really a failure at that point. It's more of a I'm gonna regroup and to see where I'm at, and then focus on what I need to focus on. Yeah, I think one challenge I had, I guess throughout university, not just first year, is that just finding the refocus point because at the beginning of first year. Or beginning of every like year you're always like yes this is the year that i go get them <laughs> grades and everything else and you do pretty well for the first two months i'd say at least for me or even the first mm -hmm. semester like my first semester grades are always so much better than the second semester yeah but if you don't find that like recovery time or just like time to like re-pick up everything you tend to just kind of like go down hills because you're so drained yeah, you get burned mm -hmm. out. Yeah. yeah, so just want to keep everyone in mind that if you set, like, a strict... I know for some of my, like, my roommate, what she does is she has a strict schedule that's kind of, like, throughout the year instead of, like, daily ones, which works out for her, but for some people, they might start off with that, but if you figure that it's not your thing, switch it immediately. Like, don't be like, but I want to <laughs> stick to the schedule. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also really important to schedule your re relaxation times just because like it can get out of control and like 
there will be days where like if you don't schedule your, your relaxation time you'll be working the whole day and you like do nothing and be burned out mm -hmm. or like um you get to a point that you burn out so like you spend the whole day watching netflix or something while mm -hmm. watching netflix you're feeling guilty that you're not <laughs> studying and so like mm -hmm. i think it's important like maybe like once a week or like every day for like an hour i'll watch netflix from seven to eight or something mm -hmm. i think that those are things that work well for me yeah yeah an, an example of like how i like reworked my schedule this summer to like keep the best like online stamina i guess was i would have like four hours of one course on tuesday with like a one hour one hour break in between so it'd be like two hours one hour break two hours and this was like a mandatory class so i wasn't able to just watch the recording later you had to be there for it so i would watch it and then in that one hour break i would try to do something where i wasn't looking at a screen at all so sometimes I would go on a walk. Sometimes that's when I would, like, eat my meal. Just anything to, like, like, I would, tr as much as I wanted to, I would avoid going on my phone or just, like, watching, like, Netflix or something. Just to give that time for my eyes to, like, reset and for, like, my brain to recharge, I guess. And then after those two hours, like, after the break and then another two hours, I had a three-hour lecture right after. And I tried that for the first week, and I realized, like, I could not at that point like my brain was dead like I couldn't keep up with the three-hour lecture at that time because I'd already done four hours of class that day and like I just like my I couldn't focus and I wasn't taking anything out of that lecture so I realized that for me it was better if I maybe did like one hour of that lecture that night after taking a dinner break and then I f would finish the rest in the morning. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's a valid tip because that's kind of like what I approach like sometimes I feel like if my lecture is at 6 p.m., I'm already kind of, like, done with everything by then, so it really wouldn't absorb anything. But I also, like, just, I guess I just remembered that first year has a very tight schedule. Yeah. So I just want to keep, like, the first years this year out there, like, in mind that you can switch around your schedule, but sometimes you'll be like, yeah, I'm kind of burnt out today, I'll do it tomorrow. But then there's going to be a tons of lectures tomorrow as well. So remember to kind of, like, remember that you still have other things to do mm -hmm. and sometimes you just kind of have to grind through like we've all been through first year it's like a challenging time and it's a lot more work than high school I would definitely say yeah. so mm -hmm. so speaking of first year like obviously I was very stressed in terms of like compared to like high school and everything because of academics and trying to balancing my life together do you guys, like, were you guys ever, like, facing that, like, just, like, stress and, like, feeling very pressured by yourself or your family? Yeah, I think for myself, first year was definitely a challenge just because I feel like for a lot of incoming U of T students, you're probably, like, at your peak right now. Like, you got good grades. You're at U of T engineering. Like, you have good extracurriculars, like you probably balance it fairly well to get to this point. Um, but I think first year is kind of a bit of a slap in the face just because you you have to balance things but in a completely different way. You don't have four or three subjects anymore at school, or at least like for Ontario. Um, but now you have six, so it's just, there's a lot more things to, there's a lot more like tabs open in your brain, I guess. Um, you could say um, and just figuring out how to navigate that not being scared to ask for help um, is very important to get through it successfully and to just have a good support system so even though I know it's going to be very challenging finding friends but I think just making out that effort to be like hey just like I think you can private message on BB collaborate so if you just see someone that you're like kind of like I don't know if you kind of have like a small connection just don't be afraid to reach out to someone to mm -hmm. have someone to get yeah. you through it yeah I think so because I think for sure is the the time to kind of just like randomly message a bunch of people and they won't be like ah this is a weirdo you know mm -hmm. like they'll understand because they're they're also trying to do that except like you did it first so sometimes they might even be like yes like another friend so I'd say friends definitely kept me sane in first year. Yeah, I think they'll really appreciate you for taking the first step. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, I don't want to like scare you when listening, but first year absolutely destroyed me. It was, <laughs> it was probably the hardest year of my life. Um, yeah, because I think I chose the wrong program to begin with. So um, I, I went into NSAID because, you know, why not? My marks are good enough. And like I was going in, like, not to flex, but I was like student, like council president, like valedictorian of my high school. And I was like, oh, this is going to be easy. And then I just remember sitting there in calculus, and then we did some proof. I think it's like delta epsilon proof or whatever. And then I just remember not getting a single word. I was like, I want to leave. So I, I go to the registrar trying to switch after like two weeks, and I realized that I missed a deadline by a day. So then oh, no. <laughs> I spent, spent three more months just like hating life, getting through it. Um, but I got through it. It was great. I dropped one course that didn't transfer over, but I knew very quickly that this was not the program for me. And then track one, it was great because school was so much easier and I could get much better marks. But the, the problem was that like my classes was me, Berbola, and like two other people who didn't pass like Linal's last last semester, right? Because like you like I didn't fail Linal's, I just got the schedule off. So like you go into the T program, but like you haven't failed anything. So yeah, my best friend's second semester is probably Berbola. He's actually a really cool guy. Um, but I, I kept a lot of my friends from NSI. I made a lot of new friends as well. Um, and after I left NSI, I, you know, I joined IEEE, did a bunch of stuff. And um, it's been really great ever since. And I've been having a lot of fun. So I think just for any advice for people who, who aren't sure about going into their major, just be, be wary of the deadlines and know their other options. Yeah, for sure. Like, just keep in mind that it is normal for you to try, just, like, choose different disciplines because you discover that the one that you went into isn't for you and for first year it's definitely like not like i have a tons of friends that i know transfer from eng side to track one i had a tons of friends that i know they went from mech eng to ece like it's not hard as long as you like keep relatively like passing grades at least like you would be kind of like guaranteed to be able to transfer yeah and even after second year people still change so don't go don't go with the mentality that I just need to like oh like I already chose this I'm just gonna have to stick it through and be miserable for four more years like if you think it's not for you don't be scared to change like it'll be worth it in the end so amazing we're gonna like wrap up this um discussion now just like one last tip that she would give the first years like right now uh, in terms of anything like if you want to mention like mental health friends or like even online tips or something like that um i would say to just not take it too seriously like it's not really the end of the world you probably will fail your first test in first year or get the lowest marks that you ever have in your life and that's just part of the experience like you just have to learn how to deal with it um how to learn how to deal with failure because i think many people at this point probably haven't had any like life-altering like academic challenges but I think first year we'll give it to you a little bit so um just staying strong um making sure that you have a good support of friends um or like upper years anyone that you know you can reach out to if you're feeling down or having questions or just questioning your entire <laughs> engineering degree yeah um but yeah also to just enjoy it too because first year even though it is a rough time, it's a rough time with everyone. So you'll, you'll have that. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun year. Mm. It's fun. I think it, yeah, it's like a good memory because everyone in engineering, like no matter like what discipline you're in, you kind of have a lot of overlapping classes and you're just like, you would always throw back, like you'll sit down together and be like, you remember our first year of this course? And it's fun times, like the struggle would become fun later. It's just <laughs> Yeah, um, my advice is just super, I'm sure you've heard about it, but it's super cliche. It's just that, you know, engineering and like university itself isn't a sprint. It's really a marathon. And um, you'll see when you get into like university, you'll see people who have like coded for like five years, already had an internship. They're way ahead of you in life, but that doesn't matter. You got to focus on yourself and make sure you can finish that marathon. And uh, definitely take care of yourself because um, I know I didn't do the best job first year and um, that really made me hate life. But uh, once you learn those skills, you'll, uh, you'll definitely do better and just have fun mm -hmm. while you're there. Thank you guys for being here today. Um, 
I hope the first years have a better understanding of how, like, online settings can impact your school life and just, like, I guess, work towards it. I don't know. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for being here with me today. Yep. Thanks. Thank you for having me. This podcast is hosted by IEEE UFT, content creation done by Akinori Kimura, Brandy Chow, Hamana Shindle, Haoshin Zhang, and Catherine Leung. Music created by Sujay Kumar, audio edited by Akinori Kimura, and graphics done by Kathy Zhang. Remember to follow us on social media, IEEE UFT, to get more information and updates about future events and more content. Once again, thanks for listening to First Year Decoded. We will see you on the next episode.